Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Glenn Wildey with Top Grade Ag, and I think uh, we're going to get this webinar going. It's 10 o'clock. There's still some some late arrivals, but um, uh, they, they should be able to jump in. The uh, Top Grade Ag is a uh, ag tech company, and our uh, our goal is to develop technology for in-bin drying. Right now, there's uh, there really is a stigma in the industry that that in-bin drying is an inferior method of uh, of drying compared to your built-for-purpose dryer, and I I passionately believe that that's not the case. And um, and uh, we've developed a product that that uh, gathers data and and brings um, in-bin drying on e equal footing with the built-for-purpose dryer. And and today I wanted to um, Go through and, and outline basically the, the the pros and cons for in bin drying, and uh, and then step through the components of a uh, of an in bin drying system to, to break down the uh, the I guess uh, the complexity and, and show how simple it really is. Then I'm gonna walk through the uh, the, the top grade technology and how it works. And uh, and follow up with some real life case studies and some data that we uh, that we got from the last harvest and uh, and some of the knowledge that that is is has introduced into the industry and 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 we want to share with you and then we'll uh, we'll finish off just with some cost uh, a cost summary of of in bin drying systems so um, just starting up here. So advantages of in-bin drying. Um, the, the biggest advantage is adding value to bins with multifunction use. Every farm has, uh, has a lot of capital tied up in their grain bins and their aeration fans. And um, the ability to turn that into an efficient and uh, predictable drying system is, is invaluable. And, uh, and and the key is that we can do this at, at a fraction of the cost. Second is safe and efficient. In bin drying is is a super efficient uh, method for for drying grain. It's slow and steady. The air has uh, a lot longer contact time with the grain. As a result, you have a a nice high humidity leaving the bin, and uh, and typically you're gonna you're gonna use your energy in a more uh, efficient method. And at the same time you're going to use your capital in a more efficient method. It's super easy to scale. Um, you can add one bin or two bins if you add a, a couple of quarters of land, and uh, and and that's you don't have to come up with two hundred thousand at one time to set yourself up with low cost on farm drying. Easy to set up and dismantle seasonally is is a huge benefit if you do have. Um, a grain dryer typically set up and, and dismantling is, is in the hours, um, whereas with in-bin drying, set up and dismantling is a matter of, of minutes. Um, and this really lets you do in -bin, make in-bin drying part of your routine. So if you want to start early on a, on a field that uh, early in the season when the temperatures are nice, you, you don't even have to think twice about taking off. Uh, 10,000 bushels and starting your drying bins and uh, and just uh, uh, it's just super easy to to integrate into your operations. Now the disadvantages of in bin drying that one of the, one of the big ones is the drying front. Every farmer I've ever talked to talks about how the uh, having that drying front and creating a, a super dry uh, um, portion below the drying front, front over dried and then right above the drying front you accumulate moisture and you actually have tougher grain than what you put in in many instances. So even when your uh, bin is average dry you, you really can't leave that bin sit over winter. You, you have to move it and you have to blend that tough grain with the dry grain and um, so 
part of in bin drying is having to move uh, your grain. And, and in, in all honesty, that is part of a build for purpose dryer as well. Um, the, the moving of the grain is, is, is usually a big part of the cost of, of built for purpose dryers. So in many, in many measures, this, this really isn't a disadvantage exclusively to, to in bin drying, but it is a, it is a real concern and, and almost every farmer I talk to uh, is annoyed with that. The, what I see though is as a real differentiator is the lack of science and predictability. Um, many farmers, when I talk to them at uh, at an egg show or or just over the phone, um, when you mention in bin drying, it's it's almost like there's a stigma of it being a band aid solution. It's it's not a real solution, and it's not a solution for a, a farmer who is tech savvy and um, and and wants to have the best equipment and and runs an efficient operation. And this this lack of science and predictability really I believe is justified because for the most part, anybody who has a drying bin, it's just a fan making noise. You have no, no knowledge of what is happening in that bin. You don't know what your airflow is. Um, and, uh, and you're really crossing your fingers and, uh, and, and farmers try to come up with rules of thumb for, for wheat or for barley, for, for canola. But ultimately these rules of thumb are, are probably the biggest cause of of this uh, lack of science and predictability because farmers depend on it. And then when it doesn't work, it, uh, it, it really gives the in-bin drying the bad rap instead of these rules of thumb that are, are, uh, are causing the issue. So the components of an in-bin drying system, uh, there's six components. The first and, and the most important component is your air. Uh, the ambient air is, is, is basically what, um, fuels the whole drying process and, and your airflow rate is the most important uh, component of any in-bin drying. One CFM per bushel is, is basically the industry, industry standard, but PAMI has done studies and, and the more airflow, the better, uh, and, and, and the quicker you will move your uh, uh, moisture from your, your bin. Um, I do understand that some of these big 50,000 bushel bins it's not possible to get one CFM per bushel and farmers have, have indicated that they've gotten good results even at the, the lower airflow rates. But, but generally speaking, the more airflow, the better. And, and the reason for that is that the air provides two really valuable um, uh, aspects to the drying. The, the first thing that the air does is it's, it's a pipeline for energy into the, into the grain mass. So when you're drying grain, Ultimately, what you have is you have a liquid that saturated your, your grain mass. And in order to remove that liquid, you have to turn it to a vapor. And the only way that you can turn liquid to vapor is with energy. So if you want to uh, uh, get energy into your bin, you need air to carry that energy. And that's where supplemental heat will add BTUs and you ultimately are, are adding the energy that is going to do that phase conversion. The second, uh, I guess, function is a transport system to get the vapor out of the bin. So you need enough uh, air and you need good carrying capacity with that air in order to remove that vapor from the bin. And, um, and in order to remove uh, the most water possible, you need high temperature exiting the bin because the temperature at exit is really what defines your carrying capacity and and the warmer that your air exiting the bin is the more water you can carry typically when uh, when the air is exiting a, a tough grain mass it's going to be very near 100 percent so that part of the equation isn't isn't uh, really that variable but your exit temp uh, can be uh, varied by adding more heat and having more BTUs in your grain mass. The second component is the fan, and the fan really historically has been the only thing that farmers have addressed. And and and, and the common thought is, okay, well, I'm going to upsize my fan, and that's going to give me more airflow. Unfortunately, that really isn't the case. The, the the fan, every fan, is is dependent on the back pressure. And uh, the back pressure has a lot more to say about the airflow than the fan design itself. There are certain instances where you can 
up a size from a five to a seven horse and you will get more airflow. But in many cases, that is just going to waste your money. And it's really important to understand the downstream components before you start to spend money on fans. Uh, obviously, there's there's a lot of different fans and each fan has its place. Um, that the axial and the uh, and the high speed centrifugal can only handle very low static pressures and typically we avoid them for in bin drying. But I, I won't get into to any more detail on in, in fans as that's a, that's a webinar on its own. Ducting is something that um, has a huge impact and, and the, the fact of the matter is that the air delivery system in 95% in of our grain bins has been designed for aerating the grain and for cooling the grain and it's not designed for drying. So it's really rare um, that you can find a grain bin that is sized with an aeration ducting system that can actually get one CFM per bushel of storage. So in other words, it's really rare to be able to put 5,000 CFM through an aeration ducting system in a 5,000 bushel bin. And, and basically what happens is, as you try to push that air through that ducting system, the friction getting through the ducting is, is just too high. So when you, you try to increase your air flows, you just are, are wasting your energy and friction. So ducting is, is a huge, huge item and you really have to be conscious of, of what your ducting is sized for. And, and, uh, and there are premium ducting systems that, that will give you more airflow and, and more efficient uh, path through the bin. And, uh, and this is something again that uh, that would take a separate webinar to go through, but but it's just uh, the ducting is what causes the, the majority of the back pressure uh, in your system. Obviously grain is, is another um, huge, huge variable. And this one's a little more tricky because depending on what kind of grain you have in the bin, that back pressure that it creates is, is going to change. So if you have a really coarse grain like peas or soybeans or corn, you have very little back pressure. As, as the grains get smaller and smaller, and uh, uh, such as canola or, or flax is probably the worst, the resistance to flow goes up. So um, you combine that with, uh, with adding uh, chaff or adding weed seeds, and you have infinite variability as to how much back pressure any given uh, a field's grain sample is going to cause on the system. So you can see that it's really important to have real life data and, and, and get away from the rule of thumbs because rule of thumbs with this type of variability are, are pretty much meaningless and, and they are going to set you up for, uh, for potential disaster. The third, uh, or sorry, the fifth component is your vents and, and industry often talks a lot about vents and adding vents, that, that it's, it's a critical item. Our, uh, our fall of 2019 uh, early adopters really found that venting was not an issue on any of their bins. And I'm not saying that, that it's not something that you have to pay attention to, but um, for the most part, the, the, the smaller bins, uh, three to 5,000 bushels, which is what we were using, venting is not an issue. Um, but what is an issue is, is uh, if, if your bin lids can be blown shut or if your vents can be frozen up. And, uh, and, and with those items, um, it's really important to have a system that you can monitor your attic pressure so that you know if your, your vent uh, losses are higher than they should be. And, and that way you can, get, uh, you can get a text message and you can fix the problem before you waste a day or two days um, uh, basically spinning your fan and, and, and not having airflow. The last, and uh, I would say it's probably the most important aspect, is supplemental heat. Um, during our fall uh, uh, harvest, we, we had a lot of drying events, and, uh, and it just really showed that the key to predictable and consistent drying is providing enough BTUs to be able to remove the water you're trying to remove. And, uh, and, and really supplemental heat caught, provides that predictability and, uh, and without it, you're really crossing your fingers. Now with supplemental heat, there's a lot of different types of heaters. 
and uh, everyone has its merits and everyone has different efficiencies but but one of the really keys that we found was that on these fans you cannot restrict the air inlet any restriction on the fan inlet has a huge detrimental impact on your air flows and uh, and it's something that you really have no clue unless you are are monitoring and gathering data from your bin and um and and it really can turn a, a drying event into a, a complete waste of time and um and again um like i said that that in itself is a webinar and um and it's something that we'll we'll cover in a future uh, future day so those are those are the components and and uh and ultimately the recurring theme is the fact that you need to know data you need to know airflow you need to know what's going on in order to have predictable results now um top grade egg has developed uh, the ibd monitor with that that goal in mind the real-time data that it provides is number one is the airflow rate and i've i've stressed a number of times how important important the airflow rate is and you need to know it uh, all the time it also tells you uh your fan status so you know if your fan goes down if you have a power blip the second thing is the water removal rate um it, it tells you exactly how many gallons per hour are coming out of that bin or in some instances how many gallons per hour are going into the bin if, if you're not if you don't have supplemental heat but it it gives insight and and, and a knowing so that you can you can monitor it hourly exactly what is happening by knowing how much water is uh, is coming out of the bin and by knowing how many bushels you put in and, and what the original moisture content was, we also can provide a bin average moisture content. Now this, uh, this lets you know exactly where you're at in your drying process and it also provides a um, estimated time until the bin average is dry or if you put in a, a target, because in, in many instances, if you're going through the effort of, of drying, it, it makes good sense to overdry at a point or two so that you you have some some blending capacity and and you can put a target and it'll tell you uh, a, a approximate time when when it'll reach that target so it really helps for for your planning your harvest uh, the, the fourth data point is your heater status it tells you when the heater's on it tells you how many BTUs per hour is being added to the airstream so that you uh, you you know exactly uh, and you have the peace of mind that that uh, that that you're getting enough heat in there to to keep the process uh, running stable. And number five is the cost. This this might be the most important aspect, and it uh, it basically gives you uh, your fuel cost per hour and your power cost per hour. Um, the numbers I have here, uh, power cost is for a five horse fan, so it's roughly fifty cents an hour to run a five horse fan, and the fuel cost is for one hundred and twenty thousand BTU. Uh, natural gas heater running at about 80 percent efficiency so it's about a buck an hour to run that natural gas heater now if you were to change that fuel to a propane heater very roughly you're going to double that cost it'll be about one dollar per hour and if you change that to a diesel heater it roughly doubles it again or a little more so it's probably closer to four or five dollars an hour if if you have that exactly equivalent 80 percent efficient heater running on diesel fuel so that that's the 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 gist of the um ibd monitor and uh and and we had a number of early adopters in in, in last fall and we learned a ton um, i just wanted to share three examples of of these um of some drying events just so you can get a bit of a feel for the type of data and and what you can learn from this data the first drying event is uh, 4,500 bushels of yellow peas. We had a five horse turbo inline centrifugal fan. So that's, that's a slightly uh, premium fan, uh, just has a little more airflow for that five horsepower. We are moving 5,000 CFM, which is about 1.1 CFM per bushel. Poor drying conditions, uh, daytime highs of 20 maybe and 60% and humidity. And we had nighttime lows of 10 degrees and, and pretty much 100% humidity. We're going with no supplemental heat and uh, an eight foot by 24 inch aeration duct. So just a standard aeration duct. And um, and I guess we, we uh, were going with no supplemental heat 
as many farmers do with their peas because uh, I guess the, the thought is that in, in most instances peas are very easy to aerate and very easy to dry down. Here's our uh, our first plot. This is a, a, a temperature plot with the, the uh, also with the water removal rates. The uh, the uh, lighter pink color is our ambient temperatures, and the dark red color is the plenum temperature. You can see we have no supplemental heat, but but even with that, the plenum temperature is slightly warmer, and and the reason for that is when uh, the fan does impart some energy into the airstream, so there is some heat of of uh, the slight compression that's happening. But also, this is an inline uh, centrifugal fan, so we're capturing all the heat uh, from that motor. So that will also contribute to that that bump. Now, looking at the uh, the blue curve here, you can see that initially we got some really good water removal. We were over 15 gallons per hour the first three hours. And that also is extremely common um, because you, you have the warm grain in the bin and, and cooling that grain is what uh, what really kicks out the, the, the big amounts of moisture. But then as soon as we uh, we got further on here, I'm just adding the, the zero line, you can see that we actually were below zero for a number of uh, hours. And coincidentally, those hours are associated with the, the heat of the day. So here we had one day that we were over 20 degrees and, and we were we were adding water during the day. And, uh, and the next day we were at about 17 degrees ambient and we were again adding water. And um, if you look here, this is during the night. We were, um, during the night we were actually putting, uh, taking water out. So this this really corresponds exactly to Ron Palmer's uh, research at Indian Head uh, back in 2013 and it, it sort of introduced the whole um, concept of only run your fans at night. Now obviously based on on our instrumentation we're, we're confirming his research it, it's saying the exact same thing but the one problem with that logic is that in an instant like this where you have one point uh, tough you can maybe by cooling it, maybe you can you'll have enough BTUs in that grain mass to get your grain dried. But if you have four points or five points of of drying to do, there's no chance that you're going to have enough BTUs in your grain mass to evaporate all your water. So to just cool the grain and just run your fans at night is going to result in a really cold bin of very tough grain. The only way that you can actually dry grain is by adding the BTUs and adding um, and, and evaporating that water. So, um, so yeah, if you have one point to dry, potentially cooling alone will will get you there. But but this just sort of is is a nice illustration of of um, of uh, what is uh, is required. Here is a plot of the the bin average moisture content. Um, you can see we started out only at 16.8 or 16.9 and um, through the first 20 hours we dried it down to about 16.5 and the next uh, 100 hours we wasted our time and money. This is just a plot of the ambient humidity and, and how it impacts or, or how it, uh, uh, it com uh, impacts our, our, our water removal rates. Um, you can see here early on we actually had very low humidity and, and that, that helps out uh, with our water removal rates. Um, during this time frame we were at 100% uh, humidity so the fan was actually turned off and, uh, and then here we ran it through the rest but, uh, but again um, you can see we had, we had pretty poor drying conditions with uh, you know 80% or above humidity for the majority of that uh, drying event. Here's a plot of our costs. Um, this here light green line is the cumulative cost through the drying event. Um, you can see here, this is basically just a fan running. So, so this there's a pretty shallow curve. Here the fan was shut off. Our total cost for that was about just under $60, about $57 it, it, it cost us to, uh, to dry it that uh, half a point. And that works out to 3.2 cents 
per bushel, which, which isn't bad, but it could have been quite a bit better if we hadn't wasted, uh, wasted time. I mean, if you look here, the, after 20 hours, we, had, uh, we only had uh, burnt about $12, $12 worth of costs, so we, we could have saved the majority and, and, and we would have had some really efficient uh, uh, drying costs. Here's drying event number two. This is uh, a 2,000 bushels of malt barley, and uh, and this has a three-horse inline centrifugal fan, just a standard inline, not a turbo. Um, 2,400 CFM airflow, so about 1.2 CFM per bushel. Excellent drying conditions. This this was probably our best uh, event uh, as far as drying went. We had daytime highs of 25 degrees and 40% humidity. Nighttime lows of 10 degrees and uh, an 85% humidity. We're uh, we we're using a natural gas fueled hydronic supplemental heater, which I would I would uh, call a, a premium uh, uh, he supplemental heating system, and uh, and just a standard eight foot by 18 inch aeration tube. So 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 nothing fancy as far as the the air delivery system. On this one, again, this is the uh, the temperatures. You can see the the uh, in, in the pink is our ambient temperatures and uh, early on there was no supplemental heat but uh, but you can see later on here we added supplemental heat which added about 15 degrees to the uh, to the air temperature so our plenum temperature was actually pretty stable at, at around that 30 to, to 35 degrees which is which is sort of where I like to um, or I guess I recommend trying to keep your your air going into the bin and, and I mean ultimately what we're trying to um, trying to create is, is a, a perfect drying day and, and a 30, 35 degree day in harvest is, is pretty much ideal. Now, if you look at the, um, the water removal rate, again, we got a real spike here uh, early on and that I said uh, is very common that when you put warm grain into the bin, you're, you're gonna, uh, the initial uh, 12 hours of cooling causes a lot of moisture to come out. But, uh, but then you can see here, once we started our fan after the fact, we got nice stable drying. Um, our drying rates are about two and a half to three gallons per hour of water, and it does vary. It goes up and down with with the with the uh, daily temperatures and humidities. This is our um, our moisture content, bin average moisture content versus time. You can see that we went from about 16.3 percent moisture down to about 13, and um, and it really is a nice predictable curve. Um, it, uh, you know, it, it's something that you can uh, you can extrapolate, and and, and it, it gives you that confidence that uh, that the pre predictability is there. You're, you're getting enough BTUs, and, and and you've got enough airflow. Here is the uh, ambient um, conditions. You can see our our, our moisture was spiking, uh, our humidity was spiking very high. We had a couple of very low humidity. Uh, um 30 percent and uh you know below 40 here and, and and those are the ones that really enhance the uh the drying processes when you have nice low humidity going in you combine that with supplemental heat and it and it really accelerates your drying here's the last slide for the uh the 2000 bushels of malt barley this is our, our cost slide and it provides the uh the total cost here of about 150 dollars and uh, and that works out to two cents per point per bushel. So um, so it was cheaper to dry this malt barley using supplemental heat. Um, and uh, th then the, the prior event and uh, and and that's through pretty darn good drying conditions. So this is just a standard air delivery system, and, and we're at two cents per point, which is which is really impressive. Um, all all things considered, you you really can't. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if build for purpose dryers can 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 do a whole lot better than that. The other item here is that the the, the drying cost dollars per gallon of water it, it's around that five dollars per gallon maybe a little better with this system and uh, or, or sorry fifty cents per gallon uh, for for this system. So the last drying event that we're going to look at is a forty one hundred bushel of malt barley. This has a five horse turbo inline centrifugal fan, so it's a slightly, slightly premium uh, uh, fan. Uh, we're moving 5,300 CFM of air, 
So 1.3 CFM per bushel, slightly higher airflow rates for bushel. The drying conditions were good, not as good as the prior one. Um, uh, no, no 30 degree days, but but generally speaking, it was it was good drying, 20 degrees C daytime and 40% humidity. Nighttime lows of maybe 10 degrees and 85% humidity. Again, we used the same natural gas field hydronic supplemental heater. Um, and this system had a, had a premium air delivery system. So it had an eight foot by 24 inch horizontal air tube. And we teed into that with an eight foot by 15 inch vertical rocket. And then we also added uh, sidewall vents. So, so this, this was basically a, 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 a had cross flow system. So we had a, a really efficient method of getting a lot of air right into the core of the bin. And, and it, the sidewall vents also provide uh, the ability to, to, to flow horizontally. Here's the, uh, the results. Um, again, the temperature graph. We, uh, with this one, we didn't start the, uh, the heater for the first two days. And, um, and you can see the, uh, the, plenum, the, the bright red plenum temp was, was slightly higher, but, but just a little over the ambient. And then here at about the 40 hour mark, we turned our supplemental heat. You can see how the um, plenum temp jumped up and, and we're adding about 10 to 15 degrees Celsius from that point on to our, to our airflow. Now, the, the, the thing that really is interesting with this slide is that uh, initially we were only removing about one gallon per hour. And the instant that we uh, we started our supplemental heat with this premium air delivery system, it jumped up to six, uh, you know, probably averaging about six gallons per hour. So that's that um, is about twice um, what it was in, in the prior system with just the standard air delivery system. Um, so you can see how enhancing with 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 the five horse fan and a premium air delivery system, you can get more more air out of the bin or more water, sorry out of the bin and it, it just improves your uh, your overall uh, speed of drying. Here's the the uh, real-time moisture content. Again you can see the first two days didn't do a whole lot with with just natural drying and then uh, as soon as we turned our heater on we went from about 17.5 down to about 12.5 so we took five points of moisture out of that over 250 hours, which is uh, roughly 10 days. But again, you can see that the first two days, we really didn't do anything. So, so really that was about eight days of drying to get those five points out. Here's uh, just, just a, a, a plot showing your ambient uh, um, humidities and your, your drying. And, and it's an interesting uh, thing to note here is how whenever our, ambient humidity spikes down our our grain drying rate spikes up and that just that gives you a real good feel to how um, your ambient humidity is is important and um, and this coincidentally is happening during the heat of the day so so obviously you want to be running this during the, the heat of the day and, uh, and and as soon as you have supplemental heat we we, we definitely recommend running it 24 7. Here's our, our uh, costs. Again, the real-time cumulative costs. Um, here we're just running the fan, so it's a flatter curve. We're, we're incurring costs slower. As soon as we turn the heat on, we're, we're adding our fuel costs for the, the, the heater. And then uh, this was a cooling episode where we just cooled the grain for about 12 hours. Our total cost was $350 uh, dollars for these 4,100 bushels, which works out to 1.7 cents per point. So that's, that is, uh, uh, so, so the premium air delivery system not only um, lets you dry more grain, but it also reduces your costs. So, so it really enhances the overall um, system and, and the efficiency of using your bins more efficiently. So that's the, um, the, the, the last of our, our drying events. Um, just uh, the, the last items I want to go through are just, just some, some discussion on op costs that, that we find. With our uh, with our fall 2019, we had we had a number of farmers who had different uh, fuel systems, and I just wanted to go through some of these. Um, one one farm had off-grid 
system with diesel. So, so that this would I, I would argue is sort of your worst case scenario. They, they, they didn't have any power, so they had to generate power with a diesel generator. And um, and I estimated uh, based on the system, we're looking at about seven to nine cents per point per bushel. Um, that might be I might be a, a little gen generous there um, because we didn't actually calibrate the the, the diesel consumption. Um, but I think this is very representative to what, what you're looking at within bin drying in sort of a worst case scenario. Here's a standard, uh, standard air delivery system with uh, liquefied propane. And, uh, and we found it was around the, the three to four cents per point per bushel with, with the standard system. And if you move that uh, into a natural gas, um, with with an, a standard air delivery, so just your 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 usual um, uh, air tubes, we're looking at about two to three cents per point per bushel, and and that range for all of these really um, depends on your ambient conditions. So the the really good ambient conditions, you're probably going to be looking at that two cents per point, and and the really poor ambient conditions would be the three cents per point, and and if you get and, and it might even go higher than that if you if you end up where you're getting condensation in the bin. But uh, but again, that's another conversation. And uh, the premium system with a with a, a, a either you know we had we had two farms with premium systems. One was the um, the T Rocket with Crossflow, and and that's the one uh, the third drawing event was a T Rocket uh, system, and and the other was a stirring bin, and both gave. Uh, results less than two cents per point per bushel. So, um, so again, you you really can't. Uh, it's hard to 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 compete with with that um, as far as your your out of pocket op costs. Now, the last the last thing is is just to to build a uh, I, I guess some sort of a a, a forty thousand bushel per month system. So, ultimately, what a farmer wants is to be able to know that that he can dry. A certain percentage of his crop, and and uh, 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 forty thousand bushel per month system is is a, is a nice number. So if you have a uh, you know if you have a thousand acres, and if if it averages seventy bushels an acre, that's seventy thousand bushels a year. So so a forty thousand bushel a month system is 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 going to be able to drive pretty much the whole crop. Um, but I wanted to just walk through sort of the a, a scenario here. Um, we've got two 3,000 bushel bins, and we assume that you just have standard air delivery, three horse motors, and and what we found is 2,000 bushel batches is is very doable with these bins. Obviously, with with canola, it's going to be a little less. With with peas, it'll be a little more. Um, and then if you've got two 5,000 bushel bins with five horse motors, and uh, and again, you should be able to do about 3,500 bushel batch batches with these um, bins. So that that takes you to uh, 11,000 bushels a week, and um, and that's five points might be a little optimistic. I know we did five points in in eight days, but but it's it's pretty close um, to a, a realistic scenario. That that gives you a capacity of 44,000 bushels, uh, less time to move grain. So 40,000 bushels a month with this setup of 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 two uh, three two bins with the uh, uh, three horse and two with a five horse. Now the cost, capital cost to get um, this 40,000 bushel per month is is going to involve um, a, a heater. Uh, basically, it's an, we're assuming that you're going to have those four bins, but but you got to add supplemental heat in order to have predictable and uh, and and built for purpose type um, results. You, you need a heater. This this 400,000 BTU heater is is the uh, the premium um, water based heater that uh, that I had um, that was used on on two of the drying events, and that's about a, a cost of 15 grand including your rads, and uh, and enough for those four bins. And then the uh, the IBD monitor is is top grades product for four bins, which is uh, is five thousand uh, dollars. This this is a um, uh, an early uh, order. Um, option that that we're we're offering right now. Um, once harvest, obviously this price will go up uh, somewhat. But um, but with those two uh, expenses, you basically have a total cost of about twenty thousand dollars to get 
40,000 bushels of, of very dependable uh, drying capacity. Now, if you want to up this to 50,000 bushels, um, the, the key here is to upgrade your bins to the premium air delivery. And what, what that does is it, it lets you use your, your existing space more efficiently. So now you've got your 3,000 bushel bins. You can, you can do 2,500 bushel batches instead of the 2,000. Your 5,000s, you can get more like 4,500 bushel batches. So now you've got uh, 14,000 bushels per week and uh, 56,000 bushels per month, less, less time to, to, to move your grain. So that's about a 50,000 bushel per month uh, system. And uh, again, that uh, you've got your 20,000 for your, uh, uh, your heater and your, your monitoring system and the dashboard, and then roughly 4,000 per bin to, to upgrade that to a premium. Uh, that, that's using a T-Rocket. Obviously, if you're going to a stirring bin, it's going to be substantially more than that. But that that pretty much uh, summarizes. Um, there's our total capital of 36, 36,000. So that that is is uh, pretty much summarizes our uh, our webinar here. And if you have any uh, questions, uh, please uh, bring them forward. Uh, right now, there are no questions. I just wanted to to also uh, point out that we're we're planning on doing a number of uh, of other webinars, and um, oh, just one sec here. I'm gonna we're we're planning on doing a number of other webinars, and and we really would like your feedback as far as uh, um, what topics would be of most interest. This um, this webinar really only is the tip of the iceberg as far as the knowledge that uh, that this this technology has brought. Um, we, we've we've learned a lot about um, air delivery systems. We've learned a lot about venting, and uh, and we're going to break each of those components down. And um, and we'd love to hear back as far as what your what your uh, thoughts were on the uh, on the webinar, and and if you have any preferences to to what you would like to see in, in the next webinar, um, by all means, we, we would like to address that. Um, I think I've got one question here. Um, how often did you move the 4,100 bushel malt barley while drying? Um, that actually, we didn't move it at all. It, it, uh, the 4,100 bushel was in a, in, in, in a, a T rocket bin with cross flow. So that, that is a premium type of uh, system, and, and what it does is it uh, it eliminates the need to to move the grain, and and it actually changes the drying front from a, a horizontal drying front to more of a, a a vertical drying front. So so you don't have the the, the issue with uh, a super super tough top of the bin and a super dry bottom. And, and again, that's something that uh, that that. Um, we're going to do a webinar on it and, and show how it works and, 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 and give some more details. But yeah, for that, that particular, we, we didn't have to move it at all. And, and we did move it uh, once it was dry. But uh, in that particular bin, we, we actually still have uh, some wheat in it that was dried and, uh, and we haven't moved it yet. Anyways, if that's, um, I think that's the end of the questions. So I'd like to thank you all for um, for attending, and uh, like I said, please provide feedback um, on on uh, w w there will be an email, and and we, we look forward to any and all feedback, and uh, and if you can guide us into uh, any other uh, webinars that you'd like to see, we'd be happy to do that. Thanks, and have a great day.